I've already kind of missed most of Women's History Month, but if I do a video about Biff Naked, that makes up for it, right? Before we get into it, if you like this video, please save it and share it with your friends since those two things tell this hellscape of an app that people actually want to see this video. Liking is also rad, and I always enjoy your comments. Biff Naked was born Beth Torbert on July 15th, 1971, which makes her a Gemini, if that matters to you, I don't know what that means, in New Delhi, India. Her parents were teenagers, one Canadian, one British. Apparently, baby Beth was hidden away from her diplomat grandparents and was subsequently adopted by American missionaries. Beth spent her childhood in Lexington, Kentucky before her family eventually settled in Winnipeg, Manitoba. She went on to attend the University of Winnipeg where she studied acting and now you're probably wondering how Beth Torbert became Biff naked. I can tell you. Biff was the mispronunciation of Beth, which she liked because it was androgynous and unique sounding and naked because it was uh, provocative and mysterious. After fronting multiple underground punk bands like Gorilla Gorilla and Chrome Dog, Biff independently released her first album in 1994, simply titled Biff Naked, on her own label, Her Royal Majesty's Records. The album was later picked up by Aquarius Records and re-released in 1996. Biff Naked, the album, featured Daddy's Getting Married, a song that often gets stuck in my head at any given time for absolutely no reason, and you know what? I'm not mad about it. Don't ask me what the matter is. Now, here's a little bit of Vancouver punk lore for you. Prior to forming SNFU, Ken Chin, also known as Chide Pig, formed the band The Wongs when he first arrived in Vancouver in the early 90s and they toured with Gorilla Gorilla. Biff followed up her self-titled release with the 1998 album I Bifficus. The album went platinum in Canada and featured iconic Biff songs like Spaceman, which peaked at number 36 on Canada's RPM singles chart and was remixed by the Boomtang Boys. Their dance version reached number two on the Canadian singles chart. The album also had Moment of a Weakness, which was on the Much Music Countdown for eight weeks in 1999. And was also featured on Meg's Music Countdown, which is equally as important. That same year, Biff took the main stage at Edgefest alongside acts like Green Day, Foo Fighters, The Tea Party, and Moist. Her next album, Purge, came out in 2001 and was certified gold in Canada. It also peaked at number eight on the Billboard Canadian Albums chart and earned Biff a Juno nomination for Best Rock Album. Purge featured two singles, I Love Myself Today, which was on Much Music Countdown for 11 weeks in 2001. I love myself today, not like yesterday. Shoes, which was also on the countdown for 11 weeks in 2002. Around the same time, Biff released her spoken word album, Oaken Spay Ordway. I forgot to tell mommy. Her next studio album, Super Beautiful Monster, was released in 2005 and peaked at number 20 on Canada's rock chart. It featured a cover of Metallica's Nothing Else Matters. Because nothing does. Trust I seek and I find in you Every day for something new Open for a different view Two years 
later, shortly before Christmas in 2007, Biff discovered a lump in her breast. She announced on George Strombolopoulos' radio show, The Strombo Show, that she had breast cancer that following January. Now, in true Biff fashion, she worked on her last studio album, The Promise, while undergoing chemotherapy. <laughs> After recovering from treatment, Biff did an acoustic tour which led to the release of her acoustic album, Biff Naked Forever, Acoustic Hits and Other Delights. While Biff is known for her immense musical talent, she has also graced our television screens, appearing on shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Edgemont, Cold Squad, and The L Word. The first season was filmed in Vancouver, did you know that? She was a guest judge on the second season of RuPaul's Drag Race Canada, episode 5, if you're curious, where Eve 6000 and Suki Doll battled it out to I Love Myself Today. Fear in the heart that's been eating at me Cause being with you was like a hangman's noose Dug it up and out and wow! While Biff has an impressive count of music videos for her own work, she has also made appearances in a multitude of other videos like The Offsprings, The Kids Aren't Alright, Moist's Believe Me, and Silver, as well as live on releases Get With It. She is also an author. Obviously, on top of being a spoken word poet, her memoir, I Biffacus, came out in 2016. And if you read that and enjoyed the deep dive into Biff's life, then you'll be stoked to know that it was announced last summer that the documentary Biff Naked, One of a Kind, is slated to air in early 2024. Of course, Biff also has her long-running music label, Her Royal Majesty's Records, whose roster has seen bands like Billy Idol, DMX, Wu-Tang Clan, Live On Release, and Biff herself, of course. An advocate for vulnerable populations, Biff has spent a large amount of time supporting women's empowerment and anti-poverty initiatives, among many other things. Her dedicated work with young women and outstanding contribution to the performing arts earned her an honorary doctorate from the University of the Fraser Valley in 2013. And while doing research for this video, I read an article that Biff wrote in 2019 about how cancer made her more joyful. That she was never afraid for herself, but more afraid for the other patients. So she made them laugh and she brought joy to their treatments. I read that she became a greeter for the newly diagnosed even after her treatment was over, and she even volunteered in palliative care afterwards. Which, if you've ever spent time in palliative care, either yourself or with a loved one, you know that it can be difficult to go back after you've had that experience. So, huge props to Biff for being there for people, even when it might have been difficult for her. She has been using her voice for years to advocate for those who couldn't advocate for themselves. And if you weren't a Biff Naked fan before, how can you not be after learning that? Now, Biff spent a good amount of time in Vancouver before moving out to Ontario, and if you follow her on Instagram, you'll get a good dose of sunrises and gratitude, which is definitely a nice escape from the absurdity of the world today. So, thank you to Biff for that.